Hey everybody, I'm Melanie from Female Fitness Systems and I recently had a hysterectomy. What I'm gonna do in this video is walk you through my experience. I'm gonna talk you through absolutely everything I can remember from checking into the hospital, the surgery immediately after the surgery, and also the first four weeks of my recovery. I'm also going to talk you through some of the essentials that I think you should have if you are having a hysterectomy. For the sake of keeping this video a bit shorter, I'm not gonna go into my backstory too much. If you wanna learn more about why I had a hysterectomy, I've written a blog post over on my website, femalefitnesssystems.com. You can pop over there and read that. You'll also find a lot of helpful information on other female troubles and a fitness and nutrition for women on my website. The other thing I wanted to say is that I'm gonna film some other videos on my hysterectomy. I'm going to film one on nutrition, so what I did before and after surgery because I don't think there's a lot of good advice out there and I'm a nutrition coach, so that's what I do and you might find it helpful to learn more about what I did to get ready and what I did to accelerate my recovery. And then I'll do a follow-up video later in the year just to let you know how I'm going with my recovery. So if you are new here, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you catch those videos when they come out. The purpose of this video really is just to offer you some hope if you're having a hysterectomy. I know how terrifying it is and when I was getting ready for my hysterectomy, I didn't give myself the opportunity to go on Google and get into all the negative things that people might say about hysterectomies and hear all the horror stories because there will certainly be a lot of them. Instead, what I did is once per day, I allowed myself to read one positive hysterectomy story or watch a positive hysterectomy story here on YouTube because there are quite a few. And I found that got me in a really good mindset for my surgery. So this video is my way of adding a positive story to the internet. So I hope you find it helpful. As always, hit me up in the comments. Let me know your experience. Let me know if you have any questions. I will get back to you there. So jumping right into the surgery, the first thing you need to know is that I had a total laparoscopic hysterectomy. So they removed my uterus and they removed my cervix and my fallopian tubes, but I kept my ovaries. So the quick backstory is that I had a lot of fibroids. I had what they described as innumerable fibroids and my uterus was an 18 week uterus. So when you have fibroids, they actually measure your uterus size by pregnancy. So they correlate the two. And I was the equivalent of an 18 week or a 4.5 month pregnancy. So my uterus was very large and I could actually feel the fibroids, especially on the right side. When they did the ultrasound, I had a really big mass on my right side that was pushing my right ovary up so high they couldn't even see the right ovary on the ultrasound. I was in a pretty bad place and I had been bleeding heavily for 10 years, but in the last year I had been pretty much stuck in the house just bleeding so heavy a lot of the time and then my periods just never really seemed to end and I just really couldn't get any relief. So I really needed to do something. Now one of the things that makes my experience a bit different is that I had private insurance and I live in New Zealand. So the healthcare system is a bit different. As a North American myself, I think the private healthcare system in New Zealand is unbelievably quick. From the time that I had my ultrasound to my surgery, it was less than three weeks. So it meant that I had a lot less time to be anxious and to think about things, which was perfect because I'm seriously anxious about doctors and hospitals and especially surgery. The other really cool thing about private insurance is that I was actually able to choose my surgeon. And I wanted a surgeon who specialized in minimally invasive surgery. And in particular, I found one that specialized in single incision hysterectomy. And for me, that just sounded perfect. I wanted as little of an incision as possible. I wanted as quick of a recovery as possible. And the tricky thing was that my uterus was on the very large size with my fibroids. And so when I initially met with my surgeon, he said that he was gonna try his best to do the single incision through the belly button. That's how they do it. And 
the only thing was that I had to give him a bit of wiggle room in case he needed another incision or two to get my uterus out. Um, and I'll tell you in a while how that went. So pre-surgery, the other thing that I found that was just amazing, and that may be because of the private system here, I had quite a few consults and phone calls with uh, nurses at the hospital, with my anesthesiologist, and I had an amazingly long consult with my surgeon. And so even though I was really anxious about the whole thing. I was really lucky because I had this amazing team and especially after my consult with the anesthesiologist where I was able to ask absolutely everything, I just felt so much more reassured. She talked about how the anesthetic these days is so much better and, and with somebody like me who's healthy and doesn't have any other issues, no family issues. Of, I guess there's a thing where you could react to anesthetic, but it often runs in families. There was absolutely no issues in my family. So she really reassured me that this was going to go okay. And so going in, I felt like I had a really amazing team behind me and that made it so much easier. But that said, a surgery is never easy. And when we actually got to the hospital, my anxiety was so high, I kept having bursts of tears. <laughs> They did the check-in fairly quickly. Like we got to the hospital around nine and I was in surgery by 11.30. So they did all the pre-checks, you know, the blood pressure. They tested me for COVID. I had to pee in a cup. And then they took me back to the theater area. I wasn't taken to my room just yet. They took me immediately into a theater waiting area. They had a little bed and a leather recliner for Greg, which was great, and we had a curtain we could pull shut, and they got me to change into a gown and some grip socks and their undies, and they covered me up with this heated blanket, and then over the next half an hour, a uh, few people came to chat with me, a nurse, uh, my anesthesiologist came to just do some final checks, and my surgeon came to have one more chat with me and just confirm absolutely everything. And then, they came to get me to walk to the theater and I just absolutely just started bawling. So if you start crying, just remember the nurse told me it's perfectly normal to be terrified. It's perfectly normal to cry. It's so scary having surgery. So I was crying walking to the theater. Greg was kind of like hugging me as I walked and the nurse threw a blanket around me and she was almost kind of hugging me. And then honestly, that walk to theater, from the time I walked down the hall to theater, she laid me down. I, I swear it was less than a minute. They knocked me out so fast, which was good, because again, less time to be anxious is just so good. I had a lovely nurse holding my hand when they knocked me out. And I wanna tell you this, because this was something that scared me so much, the whole experience of going under, because I had never been under before. So I had a nurse who held my hand on one side and she was actually stroking my hand, which really was comforting. My anesthesiologist was making some lighthearted chat um, and kind of jokes. And the nurse on this side asked me what my job was and that's it, that's the last thing I remember. I was just out. And then I woke up and I remember a nurse saying to me, it's okay, don't try to get yourself up because I was trying to wake up. She said, just sleep, you have your ovary still. That was kind of, a, I think, my surgeon's input coming through because I had said to him so many times, don't take my ovaries, don't take my ovaries, no matter what, like I want to wake up with my ovaries. And he must have told her to tell me because he knew I was so worried. So all I heard was the nurse say, you have your ovaries still, and then I fell back asleep. So when I woke up, finally, I was alone in my hospital room and I could feel two types of pain. The first thing I could feel was some pain in my stomach, like the incisions, I could definitely feel the, that I had been cut, like I felt quite raw there. But even more painful, 
I could actually feel a lot of back pain and shoulder pain and I think that was from the anesthetic. If you do any research about surgery, you'll read that it's normal to get some shoulder pain and stuff afterwards. Mine was quite severe in my middle back, like so much so that the first thing I did was call for a hot water bottle because it was just so, so, so knotted up and burning. But I'm actually prone to having really tight back muscles there and I often do need to do some mobility work or use hot water bottles to relieve it. So I'm very prone to that, but I actually had quite a bit in the shoulder as well. So that was probably actually quite a lot worse than the actual incision pain for the first little while. Now I didn't actually look at my stomach because I'm just one of those people that like gets so queasy about blood and stuff. So it took me six hours to finally get up the courage to go into the bathroom and to look at my incisions. And I was really pleasantly surprised. I only had two very tiny band-aids. I had one tiny one over my belly button and I had one very tiny one down um, down here um, just above my hip and I'm not sure what that was it was like some kind of like little mini incision but you can't even see it anymore so they did manage to get it out with just one incision through my belly button. They mostly left me alone in those first few hours just to sleep and I had St. Greg home and eventually I wanted to get myself up because nobody was coming around. I don't necessarily recommend doing this yourself, but I am somebody that works with the body every day as a, as a personal trainer and I'm very aware of what I can and can't do. And I, I did sit myself up without help. I sat on the edge of the bed, made sure I wasn't dizzy, and then I actually got up and grabbed a couple of rice crackers out of my bag and some water and I just laid back down and ate a couple of rice crackers. I was actually testing to see if I could keep food down because I had heard that you might be nauseous. I was perfectly fine and a little while later I actually got myself up again and mixed up some electrolytes because I just felt like I really wanted something after the surgery. By the time the nurse had come in to see if I could actually get up. I had been up a couple of times and taken a few steps on my own and stuff. They were actually really surprised at how quickly I got myself moving. One thing I wanted to do was talk you through what never happened because when I was looking at these videos, I had heard a lot of things I was quite scared about. So one thing I had heard is that you could get really bloated from the surgery and that never happened to me at all. I had no bloating whatsoever. The other thing was that a lot of people had talked about these catheters and you know having to have catheters in and I didn't have a catheter and I was able to get myself up and go to the bathroom. It took a while for the pee to actually come um, when I first sat on the toilet and I was pretty scared to, to do it but it was fine. There was no pain and when I started to pee I peed for a long time and so everything was working just fine. They came in and scanned my bladder the first three times I went to the bathroom just to make sure it was fully emptying, but they were happy with how that was going. The other thing that I had heard is that you have to have a bowel movement before you leave the hospital. That was not the case. They did ask if I had felt any gas. I think they were just checking to make sure the bowels were working. This is you know, kind of a lot of information, but I know it was something I was worried about. I did have a bowel movement within about 30 hours of the surgery when I finally got home and it was perfectly fine. There was no pain. I was pretty scared about that. So I just wanted to tell you that because I know that can be a fear point for a lot of us. Now, I think it's important that you don't strain when you go to the bathroom. And in that video that I'm gonna do about nutrition, I'm gonna talk about some stuff I did to make sure that my bowels were working properly. I think that's a really key thing when you're getting ready for surgery. So if you are at that point where you're getting ready, you should definitely check out that video when it comes out because I think that there's a lot you should do to make sure that your bowels work easily in those first couple weeks after surgery. So I only spent one night in hospital, yay. And I did eat a full dinner that night. They had three options on the menu. I chose the plain option. I had a chicken breast and some veggies and plain potatoes. And then I actually also had some protein pancakes um, of, that I had packed. So I had a fairly sizable meal before bed. The first night was so, so, so rough because 
you have a this pain from the surgery, which wasn't terrible, but you're very aware of it every time you move and you don't really know how to sleep. And then I had this awful pain in my back and my shoulders. And then I think I had pain on top of that from the hospital bed just being so terrible. And I just could not sleep. And I actually ended up asking for another pillow because the pillows were just terrible as well. And I couldn't get comfortable with the pillows at all. I had actually brought a hugely fluffy dressing gown with me and I got up and grabbed that and made a pillow out of that and then I finally managed to sleep. So that would be one of my essentials for you is to bring either a pillow or bring something really fluffy like a dressing gown which you can use through the day but then you can make into a nice pillow or extra support for yourself when you are in those uncomfortable hospital beds because Honestly, I was so glad they sent me home the next day purely because I did not want another night of sleeping in that bed because it's important to sleep when you're recovering and it was just the worst sleep ever. So the next morning they did send me home. My surgeon came in to see how I was doing. He was very surprised to see me sitting up looking so well. He made a joke that I didn't look at all like a patient who had had surgery and he sat with me for a while and talked about how everything went. He said my uterus had weighed one kilogram which is very big when you look at uh, the research on what they call big. 500 grams is very large so mine was twice that size. He said the surgery went really well. I only had a bit of mild endometriosis on my bladder which he had also removed and it went with absolutely no events as they say so that was a good thing they had no issues and so he was happy for me to go home and so we went home that night and I started my recovery here. Just a couple more things before we move on to my recovery a couple of things that I forgot to mention when I was talking about the hospital. There's a couple of essentials I would recommend especially if you're a light sleeper I brought my noise canceling headphones, some earplugs, and an eye cover, and those were all really important for me when I was trying to sleep because the hospital is so noisy and bright. The other thing is that I had heard you should bring a self massager. A lot of girls on YouTube talk about those, and to be honest, I wouldn't have been comfortable doing the big reach around movements to try to massage myself. I was pretty careful about how I was actually moving, so for me personally, I wouldn't recommend those. That's just a couple of other things you might want to bring especially if you are a light sleeper. Okay so as I said I'm four weeks out from surgery now and I wanted to quickly run you through what my recovery has looked like, what I've been able to do and what I'm still not doing. My doctor gave me this great table and it talks about what you should expect through the first six weeks of recovery and so I, I referred to that quite a bit especially in the first two weeks. So things I was able to do that I was actually quite surprised, I was able to do some light cooking, I very carefully emptied the dishwasher although I pretty much kept it loaded only on the top rack so I didn't have to bend down. I was able to do some light playing with Nero and I actually could very carefully make my bed although I had removed the really heavy bed covers and just had some light covers on there so it wasn't too hard for me to do. I got Greg to do a lot of stuff for me like closing heavy curtains, taking out the garbage, emptying the cat litter because I have to bend down to do that and whenever I had to get something awkward out of the cupboards, I got Greg to do that as well. One tip that I would say was, would be really good is before I left for surgery in my prep for surgery, I had filled my fridge full of easy meals and that was really good in that first week because even though I felt like I could be up and about I had actually tried to make a little bit more elaborate meal about three days after being home and I was just so tired from doing it so I think having things you can just heat up is really good or unless you're lucky and you have uh, somebody who will cook for you. The other tip that I would say is to maybe organize your kitchen in your life a little bit like walk through your house and think about where do I bend down a lot in the day and just kind of arrange everything at torso height. I did that with a lot of food like I rearranged some shelves and I even put like Nero's cat food in our nice cabinet and stuff just so that I didn't have to bend down and get it every day. And I left some notes around the house to make sure Greg did everything in case I ended up being in hospital for 
three days or something like that. So I just did a lot of preparation and made sure that my life was gonna be easy when I got home. So I took it pretty easy. Like I watched a lot of Netflix, especially in those first two weeks. I was surprised by how much I could get up and about. I had heard that you should go walking as soon as you can. And I did try to do that in those first couple of days, but intuitively, I just knew that it was too much for me. Like mentally, when I thought about going, I just did not want to go. So I changed to just doing a few little like walks and laps around the yard for that first week because I just knew that that's all I could really handle. And then about one weekend I started walking and I started with about like 15 to 20 minute walks, very slow and on a grassy sort of knoll along the river cause I felt like that would be less impact than walking on concrete. And then over the first two weeks, I just increased my distance every day so that by the end of the two weeks I was easily walking 30 minutes twice a day. And I'm four weeks in now and I'm still doing that routine with the two walks every day. And I've actually just started some very light band work and very light weights. And in my fourth to six week, I will start easing into weight training, but very, very, very light weights. I, the only thing I've pretty much been lifting is Nero and he weighs 4.3 kilos. And I've been very, very careful about how I lift him. A couple of things that were absolutely essential for me during those weeks of recovery at home. The first thing was a heat pad. So you're definitely going to want like a hot water bottle or something like that. My cat Nero actually has this amazing microwavable pad that stays warm for 10 to 12 hours. And I found I was using that because it's just such a nice heat. The other thing that I found that I needed because I still had a lot of stiffness in my upper back, that was one of my biggest challenges when I got home was just the body ache and kind of muscle pain. I took out my foam roller and my massage balls probably about a week and a half after surgery. I was pretty scared about using them, so I was really careful about how I moved. But after I used them for a couple of days, I started to feel better and I got rid of a lot of that body ache, which I think was just a combo maybe of the anesthetic and sitting in bed so much. And the other thing I wanted to talk about was clothing because that was something I was trying to figure out pre-surgery as well and I couldn't find a lot of good advice on it. It's going to depend on the type of surgery you have but for me when I went to the hospital I actually brought like multiple types of underwear because I wasn't sure which undies were going to be the best and the hospital actually gave me sort of boy shaped undies. Like I think that they use them um, for cesareans and stuff like that. And I have some underwear in that shape that don't actually have hard bands. And that's all I've worn in the first four weeks because they're so soft and there's no seams that dig into me. I think anything seamless that's just really gentle is what you want in terms of underwear. The other thing that was so, so good is that my partner has an active work company and he has these really silky shirts that um, he sold when he very, very first started. And I pulled out six of those things and that's all I wore on rotation for the whole four weeks. And after I've done this video, that's what's going back on because they are just so comfy. And I think especially in those first couple of weeks, you don't want anything rubbing against your stomach. Like I don't really have any marks there at all. Like I don't really have an incision, but I could imagine if you had an incision, you would especially want really soft kind of silky clothes there because you don't want any anything that's going to be scratchy. And then the other thing that I pulled out was some old Lululemon Align tights, those ones that don't have anything in the waistband that are just really soft. And I actually, when I started walking, I would roll that waistband down just so I didn't have anything kind of pushing on my stomach. I forgot to talk about my pain. Other than the back pain and stuff when I got home, I really didn't have a lot of pain from my surgery. And in fact, I came off painkillers within 48 hours. And so I didn't really have much surgical pain and four weeks on, I have zero pain. I can still feel it a tiny bit there and occasionally I feel it when I carry Nero. Uh, but otherwise I just really don't have any pain. So I think I've been really lucky and hopefully it stays that way. The 
only issue I actually had was I had some swelling of my gums and my salivary glands, but I think that that is just purely a weird reaction to the anesthetic from everything that I could find. And so I had to do soft food for quite a while, which was a real pain. So I think that was actually the worst thing I experienced, but overall pain levels were a very much lower than I thought. I would have never thought that 48 hours on, I could go completely off painkillers after a hysterectomy. Some of you might be wondering like, oh, well, what does the single incision look like? I took a video a couple days ago of my belly button so you could see what my recovery looks like. The, the video was probably about three and a half weeks after my surgery. So I'm gonna overlay that here so you can have a look. As you can see, it, in my opinion, I think it looks amazing. Like I would have never expected to look like that uh, only three and a half weeks after surgery. I'm just absolutely thrilled. Overall, my stomach is so much flatter. Like I thought I was just starting to put on a tiny bit of belly weight in my 40s, but my stomach is so much flatter. So I'm also really pleased about that. Overall, my energy is really good at four weeks. I feel great. I have stopped napping. I think I took daily naps probably for the first three weeks and now I've stopped napping. I'm working again. I'm filming YouTube videos again. And I feel really good. I'm gonna really ease into training because even though I feel good, I don't wanna do anything wrong. Four weeks on so far, I'm really pleased with everything. Now, this video has been super long, so I'm gonna sign it off here. I hope that my story gives you a bit of hope and relief and just eases some fears if you are heading into your own surgery. Take care and I'll talk to you soon.